Hey lovely wild hearts, it's Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. I actually just want to welcome all the new subscribers that have come onto this channel in the last couple of months. I'm so glad you're here. It's really lovely to meet you all. I've loved reading all your comments and I'm just really glad that you found me because it's quite hard to find people on the tinterwebs these days, isn't it? And so for those of you who are new here, you often hear me refer to the term wild heart. And today I want to talk about what it means to live wild heartedly. Just to sort of rewind and let you know where that that uh, word comes from. I mean, you may identify if you're here as a highly sensitive person, as an empath, um, as an INFJ on the Myers-Briggs personality test, or perhaps as an indigo rainbow or crystal child. But I work with children for over 10 years and it broke my heart that they were all being statemented because if you think about the connotations of a statement they're really negative they're talking about the child or the patient being disordered so sensory processing disorder general anxiety disorder GAD um, ADHD ADD attention deficit disorder they all imply that there's something wrong with the child. And that's us about face for me, because what is wrong is the environment that children are being raised in. They're having an appropriate response to a highly stressful, overwhelming environment, which is not meeting their needs. And I coined the phrase or the word wild heart because I just thought, well, that's just a nicer thing to refer to someone who isn't uh, who's neurodivergent or who is struggling to be a human in this crazy, loud, noisy, busy world that we live in. Because if you, grow, like, I, I'm sure if you grow up with a, a disability or a chronic illness or a label, that affects your self-esteem. Ultimately, you are a human being and human beings are messy and complicated and we're all unique and we all, you know, there's there's nuances and layers to all of us, to our personalities, to how we show up in the world. But most of the time we're all doing our best and there's something in our environment that's off or isn't meeting our needs or is upsetting us. Mine was, mine was, um, mine was bullies and um, dishonest, unkind people. That's what was off in my environment. But I, I often ask myself, like, what it, what came first, my highly sensitive temperament, or was that born out of being raised in an emotionally violent, chaotic, dysfunctional home that was entrenched in, in unhealed generational trauma? I, I, as I get to know myself and as I heal, I have all the traits of a highly sensitive person, which we might touch on a little bit today, but in the realms of what I call a wild heart. Um, so I do, I do believe that I had a highly sensitive temperament. Um, let's just talk about high sensitivity. I've got a card here which says embrace your sensitivity. And for me, the deer always symbolises sensitivity. And I often see the deer when I take my little friend Mo for a walk, my little four-legged friend um, in the fields. This card on the back says, your sensitivity is the sacred gateway to your intuition. It's that special receptive radar that picks up energy and signals. In fact, your sensitivity is one of your greatest assets and the key to your survival. Yes, if you're not connected to your intuition, which is your sixth sense, your gut feelings, your higher power, your gut feelings tell you when something's off. How many of you push those feelings aside when you get a feeling that says, oh, something's off or something's not right about this listen to those feelings they're rarely ever wrong the more you connect with it the more miracles and synchronicities you attract oh my lights just decided to move on its own thank you let's keep let's keep the spotlight over here that's it so um, those of you that are journaling along today as you know i like to um, journal and use the cards as prompts so what do you see when you think of the deer it's also making me think about Princess Diana, who Diana was the goddess of, uh, she was hunted, wasn't she? Didn't her brother say that in the funeral speech, that she was hunted? 
we're not hunted because that makes us victims and that makes us disempowered. But I think if we haven't switched on our own power or got in touch with our own power, um, we may feel disempowered, less powerful, hopeless, helpless. But that's our inner child that feels like that. Our inner child was probably helpless and hopeless. And and then the healing work is bringing adult in, adult us in to reparent that inner child and say, I'm not going to treat your sensitivity in that way like those people did. I'm going to teach you to be more discerning about who you show your vulnerabilities, who you show your sensitivity to. And that's that, that, uh, that's the key to your survival. That's your intuition. You must get back in touch with your intuition, which I teach. I teach people that on my 30 day journaling experience. It's called You've Got the Love. Right. So this word wild heart. Well, think about it. Wild, the rebel, the change maker, the warrior, the person that goes against the grain, that doesn't conform. Now, if you were the family scapegoat, so the family scapegoat is the one that takes all the blame for everything and has all of the family's unhealed trauma and shame heaped onto it. So if you are the family scapegoat, you get seen as the difficult one, the problem one. And and that is the label of the wild child. If anyone remembers Amanda de Cadenet from the 80s, she was like labelled the wild child. Not really wild, just trying to point out the F-ups and the dysfunction here. No one's really seeing what I'm seeing here and this is all really not sitting right with me. And then obviously you get gaslit by those people and they've got their fingers in their ears because they're in denial. La, 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 nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Um, wild can also remind me of flowers growing in the wild. Actually, there's a card in this deck called the wildflower, a white blooming something like that. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, you're blooming in the wild. Um, yeah, that's really how children should be raised. They should be left to be feral to play and have fun and be in the wild. There you go, there's the wildflower. Oh, there's the wildflower. There she is on the edge of her cliff out in nature. You probably will love nature if you're a wild heart and animals. Um, and then the heart bit is, is living from your heart. Your heart is your emotional self. It, it, it can also be described as your intuition, your sat-nav. People say, follow your heart, don't they? Um, you are a highly sensitive soul and you will feel things deeply. Like you will be moved by things in the world that you see that seem unfair or you see other people getting hurt. You champion the underdog. You, you want to change those things and put right those wrongs. Um, but you also process things deeply, which is why I teach Wild Hearts to journal. Because self-reflection is one of our greatest strengths. And that ability to self-reflect those high levels of empathy, which enables us to see the world in full colour, not just in black and white like everyone else. In full colour, we see the nuances, we see the beauty... Uh, we feel what's not being said. Uh, we feel the tension as well, unfortunately, until we until we learn to get some strong energetic boundaries in place. But if you are new here, I would encourage you to look back at some of my videos because I've I've made some videos on on how to set energetic boundaries. I've talked about being estranged from your family of origin if you are a scape, family scapegoat or if you have got complicated, painful relationships with your family. There's also a playlist called Healing Resources which is um, a four part training on getting your sparkle back as an HSP. So if you're feeling depressed or overwhelmed or highly anxious uh, or you're feeling very triggered all the time, I would watch that video. That will help you massively. I also have a podcast called The Wild Heart Diaries, which are my healing adventures. So I talk about all the different healing modalities I've tried as an HSP, what works for me, what doesn't, and, and, and just things I've learned along the way as I've been healing. Some of my podcasts I have uploaded here to YouTube, but um, I prefer to listen to my podcasts on Spotify. Where do you listen to your podcasts? Um, I quite like to listen to a podcast when I'm out walking the dog um, or, out, or just out for a walk or while I'm working or while I'm cooking. 
I quite like to watch YouTube videos while I'm while I'm cooking. What do you like to watch on YouTube? It would be good for me to know, like, do you like these um, face to camera videos or do you prefer my ones where I've just got my camera on the cards and I'm doing the card reads? Um, do you like listening to the podcast? Do you like the longer videos or do you prefer the shorter ones? Because I know that not everyone's got hours and hours of time. Like, let me know in the comments below what kind of videos that you've seen on this channel that you really like or subjects that I've talked about that you'd like to see more of. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Let's talk about the wild hearts. So in my book, Stuck Between Two Worlds, um, this is about wild heart Ruby. And wild heart Ruby is always being sent to her room for being an angry bear. So she's always punished. And she doesn't understand why and no one's role modelling healthy anger to her in her family or any kind of emotional literacy or intelligence. And I'm going to read you some of the uh, some of the bits about when she discovers that she's a wild heart. So one day she's been sent to a room and she's crying and Nettie appears and Nettie is her a bit like a fairy godmother, a bit like an elemental. It's probably a spirit guide if you if you want to see it like that. And um Nettie sort of says I, I need to tell you something that will help you make sense of all this because you know you're making yourself wrong you're being blamed for everything you think you're a terrible child you think it's all your fault and you think that you you need to try harder or there's something wrong with you and that goes back to that diagnosis of all of those disorders that I talked about in the beginning there's not anything wrong with you you're a human being that's going mm, this doesn't feel right for me there's something in my environment that feels off so Nettie has this rucksack and she pulls out of it this feather and this long, it's called the soul scroll, but it, it reminded me of like, you know, when you've got wrapping paper or like a roll of wallpaper and you're trying to unroll it and it keeps curling back up again and you've got to roll it in the reverse direction to make it lie flat. So they managed to get it to lie flat. And then um, Ruby says, now what? And she says, suddenly the feather sprang into action, scribbling furiously. As it filled up the page, the scroll grew longer and longer. How on earth was Nettie going to get that back in her rucksack, I wondered. <laughs> that's the sort of thing I would worry about. I'd be like, oh no, that's not right. Like This light's not very good today, is it? I feel like I'm in the darkness. I think maybe because the light's coming in from the window. It's lovely that the sun's shining, so I'm not going to complain about that. Um... And then, and then the soul, and then the feather starts to write on the soul scroll. What if we do that? Is that a bit better? Try that. Wild hearts are deeply sensitive. Everything sticks like Velcro. The energy in the air and other people's feelings. We can walk into a room and pick up on the mood. This is a gift because, as well as sensing the truth, we can also sense what isn't there or unsaid. Wild hearts know when people are lying. Their strong radars can detect when something feels off. And then Nettie says, it can get quite overwhelming when you feel like that. You don't know what's you and what's other people's. And that's where we lack the energetic boundaries because growing up in those um, trauma entrenched, those dysfunctional homes, everyone was just enmeshed, all operating as this one big person. No one was allowed to individuate. And then the feather wiggled and scribbled again. Wild hearts can even sense what will happen before it does. That's your intuition. That's your gut feeling. Um, or know what others want to say before they speak. Wild hearts just know even when there's no proof except their strong belief that it is so. Sometimes they feel like they've been somewhere or met someone, someone before. That's deja vu, Nettie, Nettie chipped in. Have you ever had deja vu? Have you ever been somewhere or done that sort of spirit soul recognition thing where you talk to someone and think, I feel like I already know you. I mean, some people have got those faces, haven't they, where you feel like you already know them. Wild hearts have a razor sharp awareness. They're super alert and notice the detail. It's like another sense. Some people call it intuition. In their hearts, they carry great wisdom, which is installed at birth like an inbuilt Google app. When wild hearts learn how to allow and trust that inner wisdom, it automatically guides them. It's not to be messed with or to be feared. It's not to be controlled or contained. When you learn it and understand it, it's something you can use for good. So I work with wild hearts to help them tap into their creative intuitive gifts. Lots of them want to use those in their work or in their life every day because they're things that come naturally to us. We don't always realise that they're gifts. 
because maybe it's something that we take for granted. Imagine the mind of a detective that adds up all the clues and places the bits of the story together to solve the mystery. Deep thinking and forever curious, wild hearts ask why and they want answers. Give a wild heart a challenge and watch them get the job done. They don't hang about. Is that you? Let me know if this is resonating with you. Drop me a heart in the comments below because I'd love to know and meet more wild hearts or empaths or highly sensitives. However you identify, let me know how you identify. I really want us though to recognise that we have gifts and strengths which the world needs more of. And so it isn't a disorder. It's not a disability. It's, and it's only part of who we are. You know, it's just part of who we are. There's, there's so much more to humans. You know, we're, 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 we're nuanced and complex, aren't we? We're layers. There's layers. Um, wild hearts have big hearts and care deeply. They're loyal and stick up for the underdog. You'd be glad to have them by your side. Their determination is steely and unbreakable. You cannot get a wild heart to change their minds if they truly believe. And then Ruby says, I thought I was bad to be stubborn. And then Nettie says, not at all. You've got to pick your battles. When it's something you care deeply about, you must stick to your principles. Yes. So when we know what our values are, what we value, we must stay true to ourselves. Otherwise, we abandon ourselves and we get caught up in people pleasing. Wild hearts are complicated with many layers. People are confused and misunderstand the opposing parts of them. Gentle and fierce, caring and rageful, sensitive and tough, creative and practical, innocent and wise, flighty and steadfast make-believe and honest, thoughtful and chatty. Wild hearts have strong morals and principles woven into their soul. Above all, they want to do the right thing. They have integrity. Uh, their sensitivity allows them to put themselves in other people's shoes. Their empathic and loyal nature is what makes them great friends. They really do understand how other people feel. If at any time they feel they can't trust you or you've crossed the line, they will be off. That's the I.N. INFJ uh, trap door they call it where you, you've always got an out and you or is it called the door slam where you tolerate so much from people and then something will happen and you'll be like see you later radiator people come to them when there's a problem they want to make right the wrongs and live in peace and harmony wild hearts want to break down old ways of being they don't just make plans they make plans happen they are the change makers they bring ideas to life and lead revolutions. And we are now entering the age of Aquarius in Pluto, where revolutions are very likely to happen. Lots of wild hearts have experienced immense sadness and loneliness. They want a better world for others and their pain is what fuels their desire for something more loving and less painful. Yeah, they see pain in the world and they want to make that right. We have to be careful that we don't then venture into the world of fixers and rescuers. We can very easily um, fall into that pattern. Expect the unexpected. Take away the word normal. Wild hearts work around the rules. They won't be hemmed in. They have crazy creativity that they use to solve problems and challenges. They have an amazing imagination which is limitless. Wild hearts flourish with responsibility. They are natural leaders and are comfortable taking charge. People are drawn to their energy. Nothing will beat them. They get scared, but then they have the courage to do what they know they must do. They dare to tread a different path and it's not always the easiest one. And then um, Nettie invites Ruby to the wilderness and she says the path to the wilderness isn't for people who do things by halves. So really the path to the wilderness is the awakening path, the path to healing, um, the path to becoming more conscious as a human being. Is that where you're from? I began to piece it all together like a super detective. I now knew that I was. So basically, I summed up, we're called wild hearts because we're creative change makers that lead from the heart with our fiery courage and steely determination. Then I pause for dramatic effect. But we're also de deeply sensitive and full of love. The soul scroll and its feathery friends swished backwards and forwards, applauding in unison. Nettie threw her head back, squealing with delight. Eee, that's my girl, Ruby. You're definitely one of us. So are you one of us? If you'd like to investigate my book, Stuck Between Two Worlds, you'll find it on Amazon in Kindle and paperback format. And I would love to know if you are a wild heart. 
and you are committed to living your life wild-heartedly and taking full responsibility for your life and your healing and moving forward in the direction of your following your heart, your intuition, your dreams. Let's just pull up one card, one, one card for the, connect, the collective to finish today's video and let's have a message for the wild hearts that have found this video and that are listening. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or say hi. It's always lovely to meet you. What do they need to know today? What will help them with their wild heart? Oh, see, love it. I did a whole video actually last week on is your intuition blocked and this is the card that came up. Trust your intuition. It's time to stop seeking advice from others and go within. You know what's best for your body, mind and spirit. Sit in meditation, walk in the woods. If you can't meditate, you would really enjoy my journaling. Journaling is, the journaling I teach is a form of mindfulness which gets you back in touch with your intuition, in, in touch with your inner voice. Um, ask yourself what you need and listen. Tune into your inner guidance. When you get a gut reaction, honour it. You have the answers and it's safe to trust yourself. Everything you need is already inside of you. Yeah, and that's the magic. That's realising how powerful you, powerful you are. And some of us, if we've never experienced our own magic before, may find that really scary and overwhelming. And that's why it's good to work with a therapist or a healer or um, a coach or someone that can help you unlock, unlock your magic. All right, lovely wild hearts. Thank you so much for listening today. Um, stay tuned. There'll be more videos coming soon. Take care. Bye for now.